Okay. Your test is tomorrow. I'll make sure you are ready. Yes. I feel like this is pretty good practice, but I will just basically tell you this. Uh, this test will not be a bunch of AP, multiple choice kind of stuff. It'll be front side. Have you been doing the homework? Did you learn the material? I taught you in the booky kind of way. The back side will be a free response. Two, uh, two or three responses in the AP kind of style. So, if you do this well, it'll get you some studying of the big facts, and it'll get you pretty ready. The key is online already, so it's there when you're ready. I will be happy to help you on seventh hour, uh, either on this stuff or anything you feel weak on, up through set 90, what did I say? 97. If you want extra practice on anything, come seventh hour, I can do that. Uh, I will also be here before school tomorrow if you want to prepare or practice anything. Understood? Yes. That's tomorrow. Be ready. Be brilliant. Okay. Today, 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 it's really two different ideas. The first is a third famous limit. A famous, famous limit. Are you ready? Yeah. Good. So it's like this. Let's start with this. Say you invest a buck. At a hundred percent interest, it is compounded once at the end of the year, and you would make two. You would how much would you get back? Your ending balance would be. Sorry, when I said how much you make, you're right to say a dollar. But what I meant to ask was what your ending balance, which is two dollars. Now I think you'll agree that comes from your original. 100% because you get everything you started with back plus 100% interest. We And that's where you come from. Say then we compounded it twice a year. Now let's break this up here. I think in terms of what you'd have after six months, you'd still have 100% of the initial And after six months, well, you get 100% annual interest. So how much six-month interest would you get? 50%. You could think of that as 100%, but only a half of a year. Yeah? So that would be, what's uh, half, how much interest would you earn after half year? 50 cents. And so you'd end with $100.50, which I don't really... I don't really care about the total. My goal is to recognize the trend, so I'm not going to focus too much on the total. The balance at the end of the year. Now, the whole idea of the compounding is that instead of just earning interest on the original amount, you earn interest on this new amount so that you actually earn interest on interest. That's the idea behind compound interest, right? Right. Right. So you are now going to take your previous balance not your original one dollar balance, but your previous balance, and it's going to get multiplied by a hundred percent for all of it back, plus another fifty percent interest for the half year. Yeah. So in essence, then, if my previous balance was one plus one over two, and I'm multiplying that again by one plus one over two. And I could jump straight to the end by going 1 plus 1 over 2 times itself. Yes. 150% of 150%. Wait. What does that come out to be? What's 1.5 times 1.5? 2.25. Compound interest is powerful, right? By doing that, you gained an extra 25 cents, yes? Okay. Say, however, you said, you know what? I don't want you to recalculate interest every six months. I earn in more interest every more often than that. So I'd like you to calculate and roll in my new balance every four months. How much would you have after four months? One plus one fourth of one fourth or one third. One third. Okay. After eight months. You take your previous balance, which is one plus one and a third, and multiply it plus times one hundred and a hundred percent divided by three. And at the end of the year, you take a hundred and 
100% thirds of that. So at the end of the year, you'd have 1 plus 100% divided by 3 times itself how many times? 3, three times. What is 4 thirds cubed? 6427. So please get out your calculator. What's 6427? Give me three decimals. 2.370. Okay. Okay. What if you invested in such a way that they wanted to compound it four times a year? Do you want to do the breakdown or should we just go to the end? How would you calculate how much you had at the end of four years if you of four compoundings if you compounded it four times? One plus one hundred percent divided by four, so you're only getting twenty-five percent, but you're doing that four times. What's five fours to the point? Two point seven seven. Five fours to the fourth? Four four one. Four four one. Okay. Um, let's pause for a second and let's talk some calculus. Okay. We went from two to two point two five. Yeah. And then from two point two five to point two point three seven. So we went up by point two five, then point one two. Now we're going up by roughly point seven. So it seems like this is second derivative, positive eight. Let's start here. First derivative, positive eight. Positive eight. Because second derivative, positive eight. Yeah, it's decreasing less. Second derivative is the change in the change. Well, isn't the change decreasing? When up by 0.25, now only 0.12, now only 0.7. So the change is decreasing, which is to say the second derivative is negative. Okay, it's change, it's increasing at a decreasing rate, one might say. Are you with me so far? Yep. Cool. Okay, let's continue on and build up towards the rent song. So what about 12 months? What would you do to get to your balance after 12 months? 1 plus 100% divided into how many pieces? 12, but then multiplied by itself, compounded 12 times. Calculate that to three decimals, please. 13 plus to the 12. Two point six one three. Okay. What if you did compounding daily? One plus one hundred and three sixty-five. Forget that leap year stuff. To the three hundred and sixty fifth, which is three hundred and sixty-six, three hundred and sixty fifths to the three hundred and sixty fifth power. Two points seven one five. Okay. What about every hour? One plus one over three hundred sixty-five times twenty-four, which is say that again. Eight thousand seven hundred and sixty to the. 8,760th, which I suppose is like 8,761, 8,760th to the 8,760th power. 2.718. Beautiful. All right. If you did this continuously, let's jump every second, um, then. Yeah, continuously. That would mean that we do this over and over again. So, what is the denominator approaching? So, 1 over x with x approaching infinity. What about the x? 
to the x, and this is approaching p. E. This is, in fact, the definition of e. That is where e comes from, or one of the ways to derive e. Um, it is the idea of, gosh, if you look at this, it went, it went three halves to the second and then four-thirds to the third, and five-fourths to the fourth, and then thirteen-twelfths to the twelfth. What's happening in the base? It's approaching one. And the exponent is approaching infinity. Now, this is actually an other indeterminate form we haven't covered yet. Approaching one to the infinity, I'm not sure what that says, is often related to E. And just so we're clear, so you're clear on big ideas of math, um, if, if I'm an explorer and I come upon an island that nobody's seen before, did I make that island exist? Did that island exist before I came upon it? Yes. Okay. What about pi? Was pi there before people came up with this idea of pi? Exactly. Because we didn't come up with this idea of pi. I didn't make pi. It just is there. Okay. Same with e. It's a naturally occurring number. It's not something mathematicians just made. It's a naturally occurring number. It occurs in nature. Just like pi. It's several numbers, actually. But... Um, this is not some kind of mathematician fabrication. It's there. It was an island just sitting there waiting to be discovered. And uh, I can't remember actually even who came along with this, but it's named after, people say it's named after Euler, but I believe that to be false. I don't think it's named after Euler. It's named after Brown, he discovered it. Okay. Um, at any rate, great, famous, famous mathematician. We'll, we'll cover Euler's method this week or next week. Not next week. Okay, uh, it's sort of, it's sort of, it's pronounced sort of, I know it looks like Euler. But it's oh, I heard you get that off the shelf. Yes, I'm going to bring it in and start using it and kind of bump it up. All right, now, that's one, one big idea of today is where he comes from. I want you to come away with the fact that if you see this, you recognize it as a big fat e. e. Now that's not e to the x. That's e to the one or e. We can see the numerical form is what we found. It's e or e, e to the first. Okay. Now the next thing I want is to develop our practice of skill you'll need as a higher math with estudiante de matemáticas. So if you look at any good college textbook. If you look at the back two pages, every book has what's called a table of integrals. It's polite. Okay? It might have various stuff like, here, let's look at old number 79. 79 is if you stumble across the integral of u squared minus a squared square rooted over u, then it's equivalent to the square root of u squared minus a squared over u um, plus the natural log of the absolute value of u plus the square root of u squared minus a squared all plus c. Okay, now my point is this. Every college book has this table of integrals and this book only has 111. I believe mine had an excess of 200 quick print. But um, they'll give you, you're not expected to remember because it's don't worry. But you will know, have to know how to adapt the table of integrals to what you have. It's not going to look like this. It'll be the square root of 3x squared plus 2. And you'll have to know how to adapt it. Now, that is very much a skill that I need to impart to you. This is a good time to start practicing that skill. You could think of it kind of like a use of this. In fact, you'll see a lot of overlap between this and use of, right? All of these are some tweaked version of one of the famous limits. You need to figure out, all right, how has it been tweaked and what is it equivalent to? And then again, it'll bump.
borrow on their use of skills and limit operations. So we'll do one or two together, and then you'll try one, and hopefully you'll start getting the idea. First, this surely reminds you of sign of you over you. Actually, sign of you over you. You need to get that in your notes first. Three limits you should recognize. You should know that as u goes to zero, if you take the limit of sign of u over u, that is one. Okay, now, if you don't remember that, worry not, because you could always get that for people. There's also a less lesser known trig one, cosine of x minus one over x. That's zero over zero, but when you look at it, you see that it actually is zero. True. Okay? Add to that the one we just talked about. Those should be used, sorry, not axes, my bad. I do. Uh, because it doesn't have to be just plain old x. It could be 3x squared and, you know, 7x. It could be any function. And the limit as u goes to 0 of 1 plus 1 over u to the u is e. E to the first. All right. Now then. Uh, oh, yes. Thank you. You're right. Sorry. That should be it. Thank you. Uh, zero would not. Uh, we'll actually play with one. All right. So that first one then should remind you of sign of u to the u. You need to figure out how do I tweak this. First, let's deal with the reciprocal. Um, if I imagine if I ask this uh, x squared plus 3x minus 5. If you were doing that limit, what would you do with the 2 along the way? You would just kind of wait until it does its thing, right? So in essence, you're really saying 2 over the limit as x goes to 0. You could even say that, yeah? Okay. Now, that is what we're going to do here. I could just as easily call this, I need the reciprocal kind of thing. Now, wouldn't this be the same as the 1 over x goes to 0 of sine of x over 2 over 2x? Two Let's go this way. I'll do this in two steps. Okay? Would you agree with this? No, I don't. I want to say this. No, I still want that's the same thing. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, would you agree those are the same? Do you agree those are the same? Yes. Okay. Would you also agree that the one is a non issue? So instead of the limit of 1 over that, I could just focus on 1 over the limit of. Okay. Now let's deal with the mismatch between u and x over 2 and the 2x. In other words, let's deal with those two. Things. Now the one you should select is the sign argument. That's the one that has to be made just right. The 2x, you can play with that because it's just a normal x and you can pull the half out or bring it. That's not an issue. It's the sign argument that's an issue. So focus on this. We're going to let u equal x over 2 so that this then becomes sine of u, like I want. Right. Now we need to make two changes to compensate or go along with that. First of all, 2x. If, if I let u equal x over 2, then x is, or sorry, x is 2u, so 2x is 4 you. Let's say that again. So in terms of what I would substitute in for 2x, what goes in in place of 2x? For you. Okay. What about the limit? 
if x goes to 0, what would u go to? As x goes to 0, zero. u over 2 goes to 0. So that also cool. All right, now we're this close. We just have that 4 issue. What can I do with that 4? I can't move it out. It's 1 over a fourth. You could actually move that up. I don't know if that's what you said, but either way. Now we're good to go. What's the limit equal to? 1 over a fourth, which is 4. I'm showing a lot of work. You could definitely condense a few steps. That's the idea. Are you with me? Okay. Let's try an E. This will also deal with a little exponent rules, obviously. Um, let's start with choosing your substitution. Now, again, this is not the issue. In here is the issue. Because that's inside the argument, anything that's inside the argument, that's where you want to focus on making the u, because there's not a lot you can do. Once it's inside a function, you can only tweak so much. Stuff outside, like the 2x or the exponent, that I can play with. But the inside of function, that not so much. So I need x over 2 to equal 1 over u in order for this to start to look like e. Okay? Now I did that by saying what I have and what I need. My substitution came from what I needed to make and what I had to start with. Now that rules all other things then. What about the x? If I want to replace x in the exponent, what is it in u term? Oh, sorry. This should have been 1 over x, I told you. Sorry about that. Will you change the original to 1 over x? Oh, and I kept forgetting to fix that before I printed it. So that's going to change. Yes, question? The limit here? x goes to 0 is what I want. That's what I want. Um, yeah, 1 to the infinity is not so... If with this there, yes, but sorry, that should be 1 over x. I apologize. Where's my change? Did you all change that to 1 over x? Sorry. Yes? Okay, sorry. Now, um, I need to sub for that 1 over x. Um, x, as you just said, is 2 over u, so 1 over x is 2 over 2. And last but not least, the limit. As x goes to 0, and that probably should be from the positive side, u goes to what? If x goes to 0, u goes to... As x gets smaller and smaller, what will u get? Bigger. Bigger, yeah. What's 1 divided by a huge number, or a small number? A huge number. Okay, they're inversely related. As x gets small, u gets large. So this should be equivalent to the limit as u goes to infinity. All right. Now we're oh so close. This matches. This matches. Now there's the half issue. Um, if I wanted to figure what this was, couldn't I just focus on what the variables were and then at the last minute square root? Right? I mean, I could just focus on what's this stuff doing and then the square root of that. And then get bigger and bigger, and then what's this stuff doing in square root that? In essence, then, this is the same as saying, I could take the limit on all the variable expression, and then at the end, square root the results, and it would be the same as if I square rooted inside. It behaves a little like a coefficient. So I can do the numerical part of the end. Okay? Well, what is this? That all interior z to the half. So this is. I want to do. Give this one a go. This one doesn't have any mistakes in it, if you can believe it. It's actually what I want to look like.
17. 17. Okay. Ready? Yes. You conclude e to the six. Six. Yes. Is e to the six. Shall we go to it? Or no, you got it. Got it? Does anybody need to see the one? Yes. Sure. I appreciate that you're willing to say so. All right. I focus on the inside and I let 1 over u equal 2 over x. Um, with that substitution, then that becomes 1 plus 1 over u, and I'm started. I'm on my way. I then say, what about the 3x? Um, if x is 2u, if I cross multiply, then 3x is 6, so this becomes 6. Last but not least, the limit. Because x and u are in the same place, as x gets infinitely large, u would get infinitely large, and vice versa. So that is going to be u to the infinity. After that, you isolate the u definition. The u definition is just this piece. And then I can figure out what that is, and then take the outcome to the 6, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Questions? Okay. Bene, bene. Questions on 99 and 100. 99. Five. Five. 18. You can skip six, by the way. Sorry. I didn't like that tangent ring question. It's supposed to be compared and contrast. Five. Did I hear five and 18? Is that correct? Okay. Five and eighteen. What? Twenty. Sorry. Six. Did you say in twenty-two? No, skip six. Skip six. Yes. Twenty-two. Yeah. Okay. Let's call that good. All right. Ninety-nine five. One. Yeah. And eleven. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's not call that good, apparently. 1 and 11. All right, got it. Let's call that good. 5, 99, 5. Is that replaced? No, that's normal. Okay. Okay, so you know velocity is t plus 1 over t. You know, position at time 3 is 5. And you want position at time anything. Okay. So, here we go. Um, how can I get from velocity to position? Uh, anti. Anti. So, position is the antiderivative of velocity. What's the integration key to that? How would you integrate that? Split it up into 1 plus 1 over t. Oh. That. that might would be where you're getting stuck. Do you get from there? And then you just bring that into 2. Integrate, yeah, just integrate each piece. T plus natural log of S with the T plus C. Here's the addition for finding Z. They might have, they might have uh, done some log rules to the answer. I don't know. That's if, if they did, I don't know if they're You can leave it like that. Or actually, C then is, what, 2 minus log 3? So there you go. T plus log T plus log of T plus 2 minus natural log of 3. There you go. I suppose they could put those two together by log rules if you wanted to. Okay. 18. 18. Okay. Find the general solution to e to the 2x minus 3y. How do you split these variables? How do you separate the variables? Uh, 
Unfortunately, then you have natural log on the differential, and that's not good. Try something else. Yeah, these. Separate these. Tab? Um, like that. Quotient rule for exponents. Wait. Then you have e to the 3y dy equals e to the 2x dx. Mental use of integrate. And I don't think they ask you to solve for y, so you can just leave it once you integrate. Does that get you going? Okay. That's a bit of a trick. It's one thing, once you see it, generally you don't forget it, but it does help to see it once. Okay. 20. Is 20 still a question? On. 99. Oh, 20's a replacement. You need to see the limits for the uh, inequality limit definition stuff in 20. Do we already talk about that? Who has 20? Do you need 20? Yeah. Good, because that's going to be important in the next couple of days. You should ask. All right. So they tell you f of x is negative one third x plus 1. You're supposed to show when, some books might even say when, if, if or when, x minus 6 is less than a tenth, then it must follow that f of x plus 1 is less than a thirty. Okie dokie. You know, a um, little cheater step here. I would, before I, this is where you're starting from. I start here and try and end here. It's kind of like an identity in that sense. But I, before I get going, I like to put right bef the step that I need to get right before this. I will be home free if I can get to the stage where I have negative one-third x plus one plus one is less than one thirty. If I can get that, then that's up of x and boom, I'm done. So I really want to focus not so much on this to there, but this to here. All right, so then, it, the good news is it doesn't matter if you focus on this side and try and make it, or this side and try and make that, because either way, the other side will happen as a consequence without anything done. So, um, I typically focus on the making the tenth into thirtieths. I could multiply both sides by a third, and that would be mathematically sound because it's positive. I wouldn't have to worry about switching the integrals. I'm good. Cool? All right, then. The left side, or the right side is 1 30th. I'm golden on the left side. Here's where we start getting creative. I want to get a negative 1 3rd inside the absolute value. I'll start by making this negative. Would you agree that 1 3rd is the same as the absolute value of negative 1? Those are equivalent. I didn't break that. This is a little less obvious rule. If you have the absolute value, the product of two absolute values, it's the same as the single product and then absolute value. Now that means then that I could call this product the single product of negative one third x minus six. If I do that and then distribute, I get negative one third x plus two is less than one thirtieth. I'm just about there. I want to get to this step. Negative one third x plus one plus one. Well, I just break up the two into plus one and plus one. From that, I can conclude that it must be the case that I will get to f of x plus one is less than a thirtieth as a consequence. Up. That's going to be a skill we'll use in Delta Epsilon proof this week. 22? Is 22 still a question? Yeah. All right. 22. Scooby-Doo. Didn't I do this? I feel like I've done this a million times. Okay. It's this. Oh, it was. It was. You know, the one before was asking about distance. This one's asking about radius. Oh, so they are. Okay. Oh yeah, I see what you're seeing. This is now. This is a related rates problem, not a precalculus problem. Got it. Okay. So, um, the. 
two globes here. The north is N, east is 4N. 4N miles per hour. Okay, we want, at what rate is the distance we want the DDT when? Half hour? When time is a half. Okay, uh, in order to find that, let's get the old equation. Uh, let's call this, what did you call these, x, y, what did you call them? Something? And sure. east and north, all right, I'll call them east, x, and y. Wouldn't you agree that x squared plus y squared equals d squared? And that if this boat is traveling n miles per hour, then that's a rate of change in y. So you could also say in calculus terms that the y dt is n. And if this is x, then the rate at which x is changing is 4 n. We Cool. All right, then. Uh, if I differentiate with respect to time, then I get 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals 2d dd dt. Drop the 2s just for fun. And let's, uh, after a half hour, What's the y distance? Mm -hmm. N miles per hour for a half hour is? Mm -hmm. Half n or n over 2. What's the x distance? That? Mm -hmm. 2 n. And so by Pythagorean theorem, this would be something like 4 n squared plus 1 fourth n squared or root 17 n over 2. If I get a common denominator, take out the n squared, and square root that denominator of 4. Are we cool? Mm -hmm. So plugging in the instance, then, at the instant they ask, x is n over 2. The x dt is 4n. y is, ah, oh, shucks, x was not n over 2, x was n, sorry. dx dt was 4n. y is n over 2. dy dt is n. d is root 17n over 2. And dd dt is that which we are trying to find. Do the algebra. Cha, cha, cha. Okay, cool. Set 100. Set 100. What? Oh. oh, I forgot my little 1 and 11 off to the side. Sorry, my bad. Wishful thinking. 1. Not bad. 1 is... Um, so, you had a rectangle up here at 9 minus x squared or a problem. And one down here at x squared minus 1. What was your rectangle equation that you were trying to maximize? Did you call it 2xy? I feel alone. Is this a question? All right, then. I guess I'll call it good unless you have a question. OK? Let me know if you. Get back with me and you want to go over that. So then, I'm going to go over 11. Anybody want 11? Yes. Okay, then. 11. Using the trapezoidal rule, if n equals 6, I didn't replace that. Did I? 11? No. Okay. Trapezoidal rule for n equals 6 to approximate the area on 1 over x, from 1 to 4. If I estimate this area, this is a good review. And what is this equivalent to estimate? Hmm. 
This is the same as the natural log of four. Lee? All right, then. If you were to estimate this with six trapezoids, one to four, four region is three wide. And I'm breaking this into six trapezoids, so each part will be a half. So I'll have a base of, or a height of a half divided by two. And then F at one once, then two F at every interior, three halves, four halves, five halves, six halves, seven halves, and a single F at four. That's your setup. Very on your way. Okay then, set 100. Question on set 100. 21. 21. 3. 3. 20. 18. 18. Is 5 also a replacement? Ooh, 5 is a humdinger. Let's go with 5 also. Is it 3 You just skipped it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why? Because we skipped this. We got to see that. Oh. I just didn't want to do it. Well chosen. Well chosen. All right. 21. <laughs> okay. Did you get started? I got one six of an inch. I. So let's start here. How do you find percent error in volume? The error in the volume is dv is to v as, or the error as related to the volume of the thing you're measuring itself, and then made a percent is a percent. Now you want this to be less than 5%. We? Are with me so far? Okay, let's get into details. If V is X cubed, then DV DX is V prime, so DV is V prime DX, yes? That is a huge. V. v. What? What is that second on the left? Uh, left. The D V D X equals V. Equals. Uh, that's no. Sorry. Oh, that's v supposed prime? to be V prime. My mistake. I wonder if you Okay. Is V prime? Okay. So D V is the rate of change for the volume with respect to X times the amount of change in X gives you an amount of change in Y. What's V? X to the third. Uh, might as well move that 100% over and call this 120. Cool. Okay, what's V prime? 3x squared dx over x cubed plus 20. That simplifies to 3 over x dx is less than 120. Now look. There's one more thing we can put in. Okay, so you need to establish what are you shooting for and what do you know? What's the question? Let's go there. How accurate does the measure the side be? Okay, so how accurate? That means how much can I be off by? How much can the side be off by? That means what can the delta x be? And what is the differential form of delta x? Dx. So the end goal is. How much can I be off by on the side? dx is what I'm looking for. That's what I need to get. So now, what is that? Read the problem. 10. 10, yeah. So that's 3 tenths. So it's less than 1 20th. So 
Um, that we've talked about this, the absolute value of a product is the same as the product of the absolute value. So this amounts to then dx is less than 1 20th times 3 tenths, or 10 thirds, excuse me. So the error in the side measurement could be, must be less than a sixth, and that's one six, sixth of a centimeter, an inch, or centimeter. Yeah. With that little of, if you get the side measured that accurately, then after it's all that error is used in the volume calculation, the error will still be less than 10 on the volume, or less than 5% in the volume. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, three. Question on three. Hundred number three, is that a replacement? It is. Okay. So on the first, if you were to illustrate F prime from the MVT, then please tell me what's the big idea of MVT for derivatives? It's just plain old English, where the average slope Right, exactly. Okay. Now I know the average slope would be connecting these points. If the overall average rate of change over the interval is that rate, then there's got to be at least one place inside that has that same rate of change. So what am I looking to draw? I'm trying to draw a what? S slope at a point that's parallel to that one. So maybe about here-ish. Now this will be eyeballing, but somewhere in there, yeah? Okay. Now the question then, if I'm not mistaken, is illustrate F prime C from MVT and say, what is C approximately? About what point is this here? Okay, I would say anything in the ballpark of one probably is fine. So Okay, understand? The next idea is MVT for integrals. Okay, now then, this is not estimating a derivative at some point. It's estimating some function value for integrals. What's the idea here? Well, on MVT for integrals, I'm trying to find an average value. Some y value in here that's between all these y values. Well, surely, just like any average, it's got to be in between the max and the min, right? And in terms of area, what kind of figure am I trying to draw? I'm trying to draw in such a way that all the areas above are exact opposites of or equal to all the areas below. That is another idea of averages, is all, the sum of all the differences below should equal the all, sum of all the differences above. So it would have to be somewhere in here to make that problem happen. So I took a stab at something like, something close to, I took a set to use about one point. My name's Matt. What do you think? So that, that yeah, it's very much an eyeball. I just want to see that you understood the ideas of them. <clears throat> um, I guess I'll take 99, but if you need more time, I'm going to do that. How about 90 today? Oh, Mr. Ritz, instead of last Friday. Last Friday. Last Friday. 